There have been a few years since Transformers started that have been key to the franchise. People might say 1984, or maybe 1986 due to the release of Transformers the movie. Speaking of movie, what about 2007 and the launch of the live action movie on the big screen and Transformers animated on the small screen? All of these are excellent choices and worthy of discussion in the future. But there's one that I want to talk about today that's very important to me. Permit me, if you will, a little trip back in time. So I was born in November of 1982 and I'll fully admit that there's very little that I remember from those early days of the brand. Now, of course, there's some things that are stuck in my head. For example, the first time that I viewed Transformers the movie and attempted to stop my parents from turning it off at the end as the credits rolled because, well, Victor Caroli promised me that Optimus Prime would return and he hadn't, so that clearly meant the movie wasn't over yet, right? Now, there's a few memories besides that, and if you ask nicely, perhaps I'll regale you of a tale or two in a future video, but for now... Let's talk about the time that I turned my back on Transformers. It's April 1992, and after a year of waiting, the UK finally receives its greatest gift from Japan in the form of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. I'd grown up with the NES, but the Super NES, or SNES for short, was a step up from anything that had come before it. Well, at least that's how my young brain saw it at the time. But there was one other thing. It came packaged with Street Fighter 2. Unlike those early days of the NES where video games and toys could live together in harmony, the launch of the Super Nintendo destroyed any accord that might have been put in place. Suddenly, toys were no longer a commodity that I valued, and so, after a quick throw into a black bag, they were off to the local children's hospital. But maybe Transformers wasn't quite over yet. It must have been about early 1993 where my nine-year-old self outlined to my parents my great vision for the future. You see, I was done with toys, but not with Transformers. After all, they were special to me, and so I agreed to have a curated collection. A few simple pieces that would allow me to express my love of the robots in disguise, while also looking more mature and sophisticated. And so what was top of my shopping list? the Constructicons. Now it's important to understand that I never had the Constructicons as a kid, and that always upset me. I think it was perhaps the fact that there was six of them and they didn't combine in the typical scrambled city method that made them seem unique and special. Also their prominence in the cartoon surely helped as well. I wanted my own Devastator, and it just so happened that the team, even though they were coloured yellow, had recently been re-released you know where this is going. Sometimes you need to be face to face with somebody to tell them how you really feel. So imagine my shock and horror when, upon going to Newcastle in 1993 to get my Devastator, I was met with, well, this version of the Constructicons. Now, I knew it was yellow, that was fine, but it wasn't until I started going through the pegs one Saturday afternoon in Woolworths, that I started realising that not one of the six Constructicons had any of the combiner parts to form Devastator. And that was devastating news. And so that was it. I couldn't have my Devastator, so I wasn't going to have any more Transformers. So what happened after that? Well, nothing. The SNES gave way to the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 and then ultimately the PlayStation 2 and Transformers became a simple beloved childhood memory. On occasion, Transformers the movie would still get a watch, but for all intents and purposes, I'd left the world of the robots behind. Little did I know, however, that behind the scenes, unseen forces were working to ensnare me once again. And that brings us to the year 2002. It's the 29th of June, 2002. And my friends and I are on the cusp of what would become a wonderful Saturday tradition. 
a bus ride into Newcastle where we would peruse the shops, take in a spot of all you can eat Chinese for lunch, and then back home to no doubt play whatever the latest PS2 release was. But this visit would be different. Literally a life changing trip. Because there they were. Stacked on shelves at the back far corner of Forbidden Planet was the first three issues of the Dreamwave Generation 1 Transformers comic. Now, I'm not going to go into a deep dive on the history of Dreamwave, especially in this video. We'll save that one for later. But if you're at all curious, go check out Chris McFeely's Basics episode on it. The link is down below, but what I will tell you here and now is that this was the adrenaline shot in the arm that I needed. People talk about Dreamwave as a company that was in the right place at the right time for that nostalgia train to come rolling into the station. And I'm living proof that that's the case. I've spoken to a couple of people over the last few years about how nostalgia won't have the same impact that it once did. After all, how can you have a nostalgic attachment to something that never leaves you? In a world where everything is available at the touch of a button, how will you ever develop a separation that's needed for nostalgia to take hold? As the old saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. If you weren't an avid comic book reader back in the day, or specifically weren't reading Wizard magazine, you wouldn't have any idea what a Dreamwave was or who a Pat Lee even is. So you can imagine the shock of an all new Transformers comic book on the shelves that day. It truly rattled me. And look at the art, it's incredible. Now, okay, disclaimer time. I know the issues levied at Dreamwave's house style, and I know how it really did more harm than good. But the truth is, Lee's designs were revolutionary. They were Transformers for the 2000s. Back then, I didn't care about his weird anatomy or the grim and gritty storytelling for the sake of it. None of that crossed my mind because it was a more mature comic book for a more mature me. And yes, by this point I still hadn't read the Marvel comics. The other thing to consider is that at this point, with the exception of Transformers the movie, I didn't have readily available access to the G1 cartoons, which meant Transformers the movie, the grim and dark and gritty version of Transformers, which lined up perfectly with Dreamwave. I poured over these books, reading them time and time again, and had it stopped there, it might have been a nice diversion, but it didn't, because 2002 wasn't done with me or my wallet yet. When I say right place, right time, I mean it. A lot happened this year, and luckily for me, it coincided with the start of university. Now, for reasons that I won't go into, I decided to attend a local university, which meant that I lived at home. So what happens when the nostalgia train rocks up and you've got a student loan that doesn't need to feed or house you. Well, you can guess. A few months after discovering the new comics, our comic book shop would begin to start stocking Takara's The Transformers Collection. Prowl, Trax, Skids, Meister, and of course, Optimus Prime or Convoy. So wait, you're telling me that not only can I read brand new stories about the Transformers, I can actually walk into a shop and buy the toys I so foolishly gave away as a child. Later that year, Hasbro, Takara and Dreamwave would unleash Transformers Armada too. This was a whole new Transformers for a whole new generation, and it meant for the first time that I could be on the ground floor when it started. Also, R.I.D., which had come out the year prior, was starting to get cleared out, so they were cheap. So they had to be bought, and before I knew it, Transformers was no longer a nostalgic memory. It was my reality. And with the dawn of eBay suddenly upon us, it was easier than ever to find bots that you wanted. I mean, talk about a perfect storm. 2002 was a key turning point for the franchise. There wouldn't have been a better time for my generation to find Transformers again. That sweet spot of having disposable income meets none of the true adult responsibilities allowed me to indulge in a passion that was sorely damaged that day in Woolworths. Incidentally, I never did get that devastator. 
Over the coming years, I would consume Transformers in a way only thought possible by the Chaos Bringer himself, and inevitably in 2007, the franchise would take its next giant leap forward and drag me along with it. But that's a story for another day. I hope you found this video enlightening, and I want to thank you all for taking this trip with me through the history of the Transformers. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this video, and let me know down below, did you ever take a break from the franchise? And if so, what brought you back? Or, what made you a fan to begin with? I'd love to hear what you've got to say. So, until next time, thank you all, take care of yourselves, and bye for now.